Hello Internet, and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That. As always, I'm your host, Stephen Mackey. Now today we're talking about Illinois, a state where four of their last seven governors have served prison time. So yeah, local politics in that state is not great. It's never good when you're not sure whether your governor is passing prison reform because he's going to be living there soon. So anyways, the situation clearly isn't good, but why are we talking about it today? After 736 days and billions and billions of dollars in IOUs, the longest budget stalemate in the nation is over. Yes, after more than two years of not having a budget, Illinois finally agreed on a responsible way of spending money. Illinois is breaking all sorts of records from being the first state to operate without a budget for more than a year to the first state to have its bond status devalued to junk bonds. So congratulations, and this is somehow true. Illinois managed to have worse rated bonds than Puerto Rico, a protectorate that is currently trying to declare bankruptcy. So what does all of this mean? I mean, not having a budget for two years isn't a good way to run a lemonade stand, much less the fifth largest state. So today I want to look at the different aspects of Illinois' new reality and see what the long-term impact of living a budget-free life includes. First, let's get a little background. Now most people see this problem as having started in 1995. This mess is largely because of pensions, which left Illinois currently owing pensioners just over a quarter of a trillion dollars. Now that puts this state in the ballpark of owing about as much money as a medium sized country to retirees, not even mentioning other public debts. Now back to 1995, because that was the year Illinois was going to get their act together. Because of an already poorly managed and underfunded pension system, Illinois adopted a 50 year pension plan to get their program 90% funded. And if it's going to take you 50 years to pay off 90% of one of your many debts, you're either Illinois or someone who just went to grad school. This is where our story should have ended, with Illinois creating a budget and then working towards fixing their problems. But nope. This plan was terrible and led to enormous budget shortfalls and grew Illinois' debt by $45 billion, which in a plan to pay off the debt is not exactly the outcome most people were hoping for. This gave politicians a tough decision to make, cut spending or increase taxes. Or take the appealing approach of inaction and hoping no one notices. Hey, by the time you're not governor anymore, you'll be living tax free with the state paying for all of your meals in prison. Now this strategy worked for a while, but recently the holes became too big to ignore, which is when the government stopped passing budgets altogether. Problem solved. Now not having a budget has led to a whole range of problems, from the predictable to the kind of funny. Some big jackpot winners in Illinois are in lotto limbo until the state passes a budget. Lottery officials say the money for the prizes is there, but they don't have the authority to pay off. That's right. If you won more than $600 in a state lottery, sorry, but you just have an IOU. That said, with its current junk bond status, a lottery ticket is a significantly better investment than an Illinois bond. Don't worry, I'm sure someone who just won upwards of $50,000 is going to patiently wait around for the government to get its act together. We won. We're thinking, you know, we finally did it. We finally can have, you know, at least a comfortable life. And suddenly you're going to pull the rug right out from underneath us. That was someone who just won $250,000. And she didn't really seem to appreciate the interesting learning experience afforded to us by Illinois' severe incompetence. So what happened? It's not as though Illinois didn't pass a budget and then suddenly got absorbed into Indiana. Illinois lawmakers avoid a shutdown just hours to spare. After days of negotiations, the Illinois General Assembly passed what's being called a stopgap budget. In place of an approved budget, they got a stopgap budget, which is kind of like jumping out of a plane and being handed a pogo stick instead of a parachute. Here's the governor announcing the stopgap budget. This is not a budget. This is not a balanced budget. This is not a solution to our long-term challenges. This is a bridge to reform. That's what this is. This is a bridge to reform. A bipartisan bridge to reform. Wait, is it a bridge to reform? No, he made that speech in June of 2016, and I have to give him credit. Because as of June of 2017, 
Nothing has changed? Wait, that can't be right. It was a bridge to reform. The difference between a budget and a stopgap budget is that a budget allows the state to plan its year of financing ahead of time, while a stopgap budget has the state paying out pre-existing contracts and essentials, like schooling. For example, Illinois didn't fund higher education or pay for utilities like gas and water for public buildings, or basic operating needs like office supplies for state agencies and food for prisoners. I know, that's terrible. Not fully funding food for prisoners? Illinois, you gotta feed your ex-governors somehow. This also included not paying for social services not covered by Medicaid. You know, like mental health and addiction treatment, services for victims of sexual assault and domestic violence, support for the homeless, and Meals on Wheels programs that bring food to seniors. Payments to the public employee group health insurance plan were not made the year the state went without a budget, and no funding for it was included in the stopgap. Now you might be thinking to yourself, that sounds terrible, but at least being cheaper than a college freshman who just looked at his checking account balance for the first time has saved Illinois some money. Right? Nope. In the first year of no budget, Illinois racked up an additional $4 billion deficit. And in the second year, that went up to $8 billion. Jeez, it's almost like going up for tapas. You're paying so much more for so much less. It turns out, only paying the minimum amount of debt when you're required to pay when you owe a lot of high interest debt is a terrible idea. Who would have known except for everyone who's ever signed up for a credit card? This also hurts their future prospects for recovery, not only because they're now operating with a junk bond rating, but they have the people leaving the state. For example, Chicago State University, the school that came the closest to shutting its doors down during the more than nine months Illinois wasn't funding higher education at all, saw a 32% drop in undergraduate enrollment this fall. Only 86 freshmen signed up for classes at CSU this year. Only 86 kids. I've been to Tuesday night open mics with higher attendance rates. So now that we've gone over that, I just want to answer one more question. After more than two years of operating without a budget... What's going on in Chicago? Yes, what is going on in Chicago and Illinois? Well, this was recently reported... Despite resistance from Governor Bruce Rauner, Illinois has its first budget in two years. Some Republican members of the state legislature helped Democrats get the three-fifths majority needed to override Rauner's veto, giving Illinois its first budget since 2015. Rauner said the spending bill was a mistake and called it, quote, another step in Illinois' never-ending tragic trail of tax hikes. That's right, the guy who saw the stopgap budget as a... This is a bridge to reform was looking to bridge on the River Kwai all over this agreement. Now this all came down to tax hikes. Tis the tax season. Now this budget increases income taxes by about a third, which is huge. Although using percentage growth is a little deceptive. Their income tax rates went from 3.75% to 4.95%, which isn't going to radically change Illinois into the communist hellhole the governor seems to think it will descend into or the sustainable economy imagined by Democrats. That said, this is a step in the right direction, but when you're that far off track, that's not saying much. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that.